This here is going to be a video on why I do not believe Howard Storm's My Descent into Death is a genuine experience both from a Christian perspective and from a scientific reality perspective. Howard Storm, author of the book My Descent into Death, I recommend you read read this book for he goes into detail what happened prior to, during, and after his near-death experience. He died in a Paris hospital expecting to go into oblivion. Finds himself standing next to his body unable to communicate with his wife or the the uh, Monsuri Flynn, the other person in the hospital room. He was voices calling to him outside the door, follows him in the outer darkness. They turn on him. They wreck his world. They start beating him up, kicking him, biting him, eating him, gouging his eyes, playing with his pecker, sexually molesting him, doing unspeakable things to, to him. He hears a voice in his chest saying, pray to God. This happens three times. And he starts mumbling what he thinks are prayers because he, he, he didn't know how to pray. He thought prayer was something he had, formal. Well, these people start backing up at the mention of God cause they, and screaming because they hate hearing about God. Well, he remembers himself singing, Jesus loves me as a child. And he desperately wants Jesus to be real. He doesn't know if Jesus is real, but he desperately wants it. So he calls out, Jesus, please save me. He sees a star, a pinprick of light coming towards him. What perplexes me is why when he said, Jesus, save me, wasn't he immediately surrounded by light? Why did it take time for this Jesus to get from heaven to where he was. Well, anyways, Jesus lifts him up, heals his wounds, gives him a life review, shows him how he failed and succeeded at loving others, shows him that, that that's the whole purpose of life, to learn to love. Then then he allows him to ask any question he wants to. And how Storm asks him questions about World War II, the Holocaust, why does God allow war? What happens when you die? Are there UFOs? Is that alien life? Not, not are the UFOs, but what are UFOs? Is there alien life on other worlds? Is Jesus the Son of God? Can I go to heaven now? And he's told no. And he is sent back to live here again. That's the story of how a storm. Like I said again, read it in his story book, My Descent and Death. Man, I wish this was. I man, I wish this was the real deal. But here's why I thinks it's a counterfeit. At best, and at worst, a sweet fantasy, baby. As Mariah Carey sang in her song. How did how did that change your life when you oh, came man. back into <laughs> your body? What was the Every, everything? And I was I was I wept for days and weeks because I was like, okay, where am I going to begin rebuilding my life? I, you know, okay, I got to give up the booze. I got to give up the cigarettes. I got to give up the womanizing. I got to give up the lying. I got to give up the the pursuit of power. I got to give up the the need for fame. You know. I, on and on and on and on and control you know and raging and stuff like all that stuff's got to go where do I begin how do I love people I did you hear that did you hear that shit Howard Storm says when he came back from his NDE for meeting Jesus he wept and cried for weeks because it meant he had to change his way way of living what that means is his terror of going back to hell 
are so so strong you can take a mag magnetic poles of the same charges they repel one another they can't stick together but you can force them to stick together and as long as you apply force you can for you can you can get a North Pole magnet and a North Pole magnet to stick together but the second you let go they fly apart this is what was happening to Howard Storm you see he loved his life of being over ever able to drink raise hell be an atheist but after his NDE he realized that living such a life if he kept on living that life he would go back to that place of hell and not get out the next time and so this forced him to change his way of living and change is extremely painful if you do not really want to change because you see he was not changed from deep within the core of his being translation he was not born again because when you're truly born again can I get a witness can I get a witness out there to, for many of you truly born again Christians when you are truly born again when Jesus comes to live inside your heart you got a new life not only do you want to change and serve and worship and love this Jesus you want you, you want now you suddenly love going to church you suddenly love praying and reading your Bible not only that but you no longer want to go out and dr get drunk you no longer want to be the biggest baddest bear in the woods you do not cry about having you do not cry for even one day about having to give up your old life it, like a snake shedding its skin feel glad to leave that old life behind in contrast to how storm weeping about having to change and doubting maybe hoping his experience with Jesus was not real so that he would not have to change perhaps most disturbing truly distressing to me is about the reality of this NDE experience is when how when I read in Howard Storm's book My Descent into Death where he says it became a, an obsession with him to wonder whether his conversation with Jesus and the angels was real or produced by his mind caused by the trauma of dying huh so at best Jesus did not come to live inside his heart he was not born again because when you're born again any preacher will tell you who's been born again they know that they've met Jesus and you could point a gun in his head and tell him to say Jesus is a, a fiction and he and he'll let you shoot him because he knows he knows nothing can change that knowledge that he met Jesus Jesus and here's Howard Storm he got to speak face to face with Jesus see the brilliant light of Jesus and he comes back doubting if it was real something's fucked up something's really fucked up something's really really fucked up at worst what what is happening is this experience he had was produced deep 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 in his brain to counteract 
the trauma of dying, the terror of dying, the ease him, the ease him in the to uh, the oblivion of death peacefully. And this knowledge, which is deep in his sub 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 subconscious deepest core of his being, is slowly fil filtering up into his subconscious level of thinking and creating these doubts in his mind because it was, was not real. I find it extremely interesting that Howard Storm ne never once doubted if his experience in hell was real. So that makes me wonder if his experience in hell was a real deal but the demons decided to use them to create a counterfeit to Christianity and it was the angel of light the devil masquerading as the angel of light who spoke to him pretending to, to be Jesus and how it was, and because it was not the real Jesus it didn't this person could not come into his deepest spirit because you wouldn't when you meet when you meet the real Jesus you know it can I get an amen it's a deep spiritual knowledge in the deepest core of your being and how it storm lacked this and this is what created the doubts that he met the true Jesus. Howard Storm asked Jesus, is there a life, other life in the universe? And was told, not only is there abundant life on other, other planets in this universe, there is abundant life in other parallel universes and not only that but that Jesus had been to every world and come to that world and was rejected by some and accepted by others does that mean Howard Storm that Jesus on, on some other world that Jesus died on that world to forgive the sins of that race of beings when he died in this world to forgive our sins the Bible says Jesus died once for the sins once 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 for the wages, wages of sin is death and as it is appointed unto a man once to die and after this the judgment to suggest that Jesus Christ died twice or more than once for sins is utter an unforgivable blasphemy. If there's a light in other places in this universe and other universes and the wages of sin is death the wages of sin is death for people in this world the wages of sin is death for people on another planet Jesus would have only had to die once to forgive all sin in every world what we got different races and peoples in this world by your logic how storm Jesus would have had to have to come to the pygmies in the jungles as a pygmy he would have he would have had to come to Africa as a black man in Africa he would have he would have had to come as an Indian to the Indians. He would have had to come to China as a Johnny to the Orient as a Chinese man. To Japan as a Japanese man. Did he? Hell no. He came as a Jew and died for our sins. And this covers the sins of everybody. Red, white, black, mixed, yellow on this planet. He did not have to die twice. That's blasphemy. He only had to die once for our sins.
interestingly, John Bunyan, in his, he had a vision after he almost killed himself. And he was in space with the angel of God. And he asked the angel of God, are there other worlds? Presumably, meaning other civilizations on other worlds. You know what the angel of God told him? In, a, in essence, he said, that's none of your business. That's for you. To, that's for God to know, and you do not try to find out. Yes, God has the power to make other worlds. That's none of your business. In his book, My Descent into Death, Howard Storm says, Heaven prays for worldwide conversion. Heaven is working towards worldwide conversion, conversion for everybody in the world to turn to God. Well, let's examine this in the light of Scripture, the Bible. In the book of John, Jesus says these words, I pray not for the world. Yes, you hear that? I do not pray for the world. Stick your notes in this and read it and weep how it's storm and then stick your notes in that corner and I, I, I don't want to hear another fucking peep. You unloving hypocrite. Jesus only prays for his own. For his true Christians that they may be united together as one even as he and God are one. That's powerful stuff. In truth, Jesus doesn't really give a rat's ass about the rest of the world. They're condemned. They're going to hell. They're going to the lake of fire. He does care for his own Christians, his own people. And that leads me to another thing. How Storm asked Jesus, what would the future be like? And he says Jesus so showed him a world where people love one another. Their, their greatest concern was raising and loving and caring for children. They communicated with plants and grew only no, enough food that they needed. They could grow, they could control weather. When a person got out of line, the whole community gathered around him to bring it back in love. People were not afraid of dying because it was simply the next step in your process of growth. How a storm asked, when would this happen? And was told by Jesus and the angels, in about 200 years. 200 years. Now let's look at this in the light of scripture. The disciples asked Jesus about what what would the end of the world be like and what will happen. And Jesus described wars, earthquakes, famine, a counterfeit Christ who would do such miracles that if it were possible, he could even deceive the real children of God. A time of trouble and woe and terror such as there has never been in the world leading before and then he says this no one knows the day or the time not even the angels of heaven not even the sun but my father only but you are to watch for I could come at any time and no one knows when I'm coming and if, you're, uh, and, and if you ain't watching, I will come like a thief. And you will be shot and surprised by my coming. Because you, you didn't expect it to happen, but, but it will happen. Okay, in the book of Acts, when Jesus rises from the dead, 
the disciples ask him, Are you ready to give the kingdom of Israel to the kingdom of God to Israel now? You know what Jesus says to them? It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which God the Father has put in his own power. In other words, he told them, That's none of your business. Just follow me. The Bible in Hebrews, uh, Hebrews chapter 13 says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. In other words, Jesus doesn't change. If Jesus told the disciples when they asked him about the end times, if Jesus said to them, that's none of your business, why in the hell, all of a sudden, 2,000 years later, when Howard Storm asks essentially the same question, is he giving him a time frame, dates of when, when this will happen? So I've got to live for at least 200 years to see whether this happens or not, to be able to debunk or prove Howard Storm's NDE experience. That's fucked up, man. That's really fucked up. What I think is happening is this is Satan's deception. So that people will read Howard Storm's book and they'll be lulled into a sense of complacency. Oh, I don't have to worry about getting right with God. I got at least 200 years before he comes back. I don't have to worry about him coming back suddenly and surprising me or is this Howard Storm's mind trying to figure things out because this lot of Jesus is not Jesus but a figment of his own imagination Another instance where the theology of Howard Storm and his near-death experience directly contradicts and makes the Bible out to be a liar in the book of Revelation when it says, was cast into the lake of fire and shall be tormented in it forever and ever through the eternity of these eternities. They have no rest day or night. Howard Storm says, that when you die and go to hell, if you didn't, if you, if you do not come back to God, eventually you are be annihilated. Yes, annihilated. He said he was told that. He said he was told the lake of fire is really annihilation. Why didn't Howard Storm ask any real questions? Questions that, to be answered, this being of light would have to know something that Howard Storm couldn't have possibly known in a million years. And thus, this would have demonstrated this being of light was maybe more someone else spiritual not just some product of Howard Storm's deepest consciousness all, all the questions Howard Storm answered were philosoph philosophical questions about atheism about the Holocaust and why does God keep let, allowing wars what is it like when you die? Why didn't Howard Storm ask any questions like, Who was Jack the Ripper? Who was, the, or more importantly, who was the Zodiac Killer? What causes homosexuality? Are people really born that way? 
What is the deal with the Bermuda Triangle? What is happening at the Bermuda Triangle? Why didn't he ask any real questions? Because if he had asked such questions like this, and if he got answers that had the ring of truth, especially if the the answers could be demonstrated to be right man this would mean maybe at best he really did meet the true Jesus Christ and at worst he met the counterfeit Christ that Lucifer masquerading, masquerading as the angel of light but in either way it would have demonstrated that there was is truly something beyond this physical world but perhaps the most damning for me the most the biggest evidence to me that his experience with Jesus quote unquote was bullshit is a lack utter lack of love he gave to me when I called him on the telephone back in 2002 and in subsequent emails to him after that he talked about this Jesus of unconditional astonishing love and he absolutely cannot pass one pixel of this love to me okay I, the first time I call him on my telephone the tone of his voice is totally devoid of any emotion emotion kind of unpleasantly business like intimidated intimidated intimidatingly so a tone of voice that makes you feel ill at ease, Ill, Ill at ease, intimidated. I asked him questions in emails, and finally he wrote back, "You really need to get yourself a counselor, as I am not qualified to answer your questions." Well, duh, you got to speak to Jesus face to face. I think that qualifies you Jesus said to whom much is given much is required and if this is a truly experience with Jesus buddy boy you're not doing a thing to justify having been given this experience you're letting Jesus down and you're letting me down buddy boy One time I called him on the telephone and he said, Look, I got a wedding to go tonight. I haven't gotten time to talk to you. Utterly, utterly, utterly no love for me. Now, I bet you if we were on television on the Oprah show, he'd take time to show me love and compassion cause, because it would be in his best interest to do so. Make his experience and his story make him look good but when it's just him and me and God his true colors show through his lack of love and this is perhaps the biggest reason I believe his experience was at best a counterfeit and at worst pure bullshit now this is one instance where I really, 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 really wished that I could be forced to see where I'm wrong and forced to eat these words and have to give a heartfelt apology to not only Howard Storm but to God and Jesus as well. But <sighs> Thank you.
I really, 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 really wish that Howard Storm's experience with Jesus was true, both from a Christian perspective and for fun and truth, really happened. And where's the real deal? And that his Jesus was it and is the real Jesus. I'm really in this man's corner, but I got some gnawing doubts that maybe think it's from a Christian perspective a counterfeit. He met the he met the angel of light. Lucifer, you remember Paul says the devil masquerades as the angel of light. And I think that that's who we met, and I will explain why. Well, quite possibly, death is the end, and his sub sub subconscious mind created all this shit up. Spit, 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 man,